Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this, ugly and disgusting, and turn them into something more like this. Beautiful, perfection, liquid in quality, better looking and better performing than the day it rolled off the lot. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. Let's get down to business. Uh, the headlight restoration that I will be performing today on this vehicle, which is a 2010 CRV, is going to come out amazing. Uh, really liquid, uh, really high quality, and this is how most of my headlight restorations come out. But with the bigger light, okay, it's going to be a bigger show. Okay. Um, with that being said, uh, always do the easy light second. Okay, see that vehicle right there? This is the same vehicle that I did on this uh, headlight restoration on this video here, Advanced Headlights, much harder light. I did the other one first, and now um, I would be doing this one afterwards. Uh, same customer, uh, same uh, vehicle ownership, uh, just, um, you know, sometimes they give you a choice. Uh, you know, the cars aren't moving anywhere. I always ask, uh, you know, which one is going first, which one do you prefer? And sometimes I don't, just in the fact that um, you always want to work smarter, not harder. Okay, it's a really big uh, mind fuck, excuse my language, um, really big uh, mind screw when you do, you know, you're doing the same thing back to back, but you do the harder one second. If you do the easy one first, it kind of mentally destroys you. Um, believe it or not, if you don't believe me, try it. You'll see. Like if you, um, let's just say for instance, uh, once I had to do, um, I did um, some scratch removal um, and uh, you know a wash, uh, polish, wax, all that stuff on two different vehicles. Okay, uh, and I had that restoration on both these vehicles. One was a suburban. Um, like a, I don't know, like a 2010 Suburban Chevy, big, big SUV, right? And the other one was like a Chevy Malibu of some sort, like a 2014 or whatever. And um, did them in the same day, and I mistakenly chose to do... Um, and I knew better, I knew better, but I gave them the option, and then they chose that one, which I shouldn't have gave them the option. Uh, and I did the smaller vehicle first, and when I got to the bigger vehicle, it was just very, uh, you know, I got it all done, but it was overwhelming, just because it's like, man, you know, you do... You do something so easy first and, you know, put all your energy in the easy one first. And then it's like you do the big one or the or the harder one second. And, you you know, you, it just it just messes your mind up. So I always work smart on that aspect. Um, but as you see here, I'm busting out with the 320. The light itself is not that bad on the surface. It still has, um, you know, the... Uh, original, you know, OEM clear coat on here and for Civic, that's not that far, or excuse me, for a Honda, that is not that hard of a substance. Um, but this light is huge, okay? This light is probably, um, it, it is the, uh, mid level or upper level large in size. It's about the size of two normal lights put together. Uh, so it's a rather large light. Um, just generally, if this light was already naked or all the clear coat was falling off and clear coat was an issue just to get it into shape, uh, you would probably be using, uh, I would think, a minimum of four P500s to do it correctly. Four P500s, and it, this is an estimate, four P500s and uh, at least two P800s. So sometimes what you can do, um, even though it's not really needed, see that pro tip right there. I always give everybody that pro tip. That's how I distinguish which batteries are used. So I'm not fumbling through my bag and putting on a battery that I think is fresh and it's not fresh and back and forth, back and forth. 
It's plain and simple. Every time I expend the usage of a battery, I just pull a little piece of tape off and I put it on there. That's how I know it's bad. It needs to be recharged when I get home or whenever I do my uh, recharging, which sometimes is every couple of days because I have a lot of batteries. But anyhow, back to the 320. So I'm using a 320 with an extra soft touch, okay? I mean, I'm, just, I'm being really gentle with it just because it doesn't really warrant the 320, but I don't want to sit here and spend, you know, uh, or use uh, four to five P500s uh, just because the size of the light, um, and uh, I'd rather use just one three, uh, 320 to get all this stuff done, but I am being really gentle uh, when it's not a hard substance and you're using it in this manner, um, you want to really pull back a little bit, you know, you want to just barely, barely braise that surface, okay? You don't want to uh, dig out this light because it is a softer light or it's a mid-level soft light, kind of right in the middle, uh, any light from a uh, Honda vehicle. But yeah, this size is, um, it's, it's a medium difficult light just because the size of the headlight, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, produce the smoothness and, you know, with anything, the more... Uh, size, the more surface area, the more, um, you know, girth or whatever, you're going to have more room for error, okay, so um, it's, a, it's kind of a mid-level difficult light, um, just because of size, you know, you have to make sure that everything is smoothed out, there's no nicks on a greater, uh, air, you know, sense of area, um, you know, just all kind of certain things, okay, because just because it's bigger. Um, there's more room for error once again. Uh, but with that being said, the other light, like I said, the, from uh, the other video, the advanced uh, headlight restoration, that light is crazy. That, um, unless you're like a um, really, um, you know, unless you're really skilled or you're an experienced headlight restorer, um, I wouldn't even do that light. I mean, don't be afraid to pass on a light, okay? If you do not feel you are comfortable doing a light, I see some all the time. Um, I saw one uh, just the other day walking through the parking lot, and I see lights where I'm like, I don't think I would do that one. Just because, I mean, e would even with my skill, I don't think it would be worth it because the possibility of damaging it, I'd rather just pass it to somebody else. The possibility of damaging it or the possibility of it taking so long to do and, you know, to do by hand or to do whatever, you know, I, there's just some lights I just wouldn't want to do. I mean, I probably would, you know, but the thing is when I don't want to do a light, the prices go up. Okay, the prices go up, and if the person doesn't want to pay them, I mean, it kind of ends up kind of being like, I don't want to do it anyways, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I eject the price up, but the person's like, you know, calls the bluff, and is like, yeah, okay, let's run it. And then it's like, okay, shit, that's how I end up doing lights that I really don't want to do when they call the bluff. Um, but with that being said, don't ever be afraid. Um, you know, I could do any light. Okay, there's just some I don't want. Uh, a lot of people with their skill set, um, if it's not, you know, you know, I mean, look who I am. Look what I do for a living and look, um, you know, how good I am. I can do any light. Uh, with that being said, not everybody can. You know, don't overstep your boundaries. Don't ever overstep your personal limitations. Okay, if you're a beginner and you see some light that is insane, uh, you know, be like, hey, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do that. This light is a little more advanced than, you know, what I'm trying to, uh, you know, apply myself to. And, and they respect that. They will definitely respect that because I wouldn't want you working on my stuff if you mess it up. And here, here, you know, it, it could be ego thing or whatever, but here is the other flip side of the coin. You're not comfortable in doing it. You don't know what to do and you do it anyways and you mess up somebody's headlight. And nine times out of 10, the hard ones that are, that are difficult to do in one way or another are probably really expensive. I mean, I have done headlights before that um, range uh, in price anywhere from $150. Um, you know, in, that's like a really old vehicle. That's just a basic light, like a, like a Toyota, um, I don't know, a, a, a Toyota, uh, I don't know, what's that little truck? The Tacoma, like a 2000 uh, Tacoma truck or something like that. The headlights like $150 or something. Um, all the way up to a Porsche, uh, you know, a $150,000 Porsche that I did once. Um, you know, I did, uh, you know, a $300,000 Ferrari's headlights. 
And um, that was nerve wracking, and I had to do a lot of research. And the dude just insisted, "I want you to do it." You know, I've never seen anybody do headlights like this. You know, I believe in you. It's no big deal. I'll sign whatever you want. You know, I'll pay you the money up front. You know, don't worry about it. Um, if it doesn't come out, I just want to see if it, if it comes out. And uh, this vehicle was from a salvage because they pulled it from water somewhere. They were when I was working on it. There was another team working on fumigating the vehicle, ripping out stuff and you know disinfecting shit because it smelled like shit and like and they were like I was like why does this vehicle smell like that and what are you guys doing and they're like oh he bought this vehicle um, from a salvage yard because it was pulled from underneath uh, uh, going up a bridge or something and it was an immaculate but like it was in water somehow there was no like damage or nothing but somebody apparently went over some shit and you know it was in the water for like a week or so before they could pull it out so it stunk really bad, like just swamp water or poop or something, right? And uh, so uh, he wanted me to do the headlights because all the uh, the the uh, clear coat, like he wrote it off, some weird type stuff. But surprisingly, there was no water inside the headlights. But to make a long story short, these headlights, when I looked them up, they were like seven grand a piece. They had all kind of stuff inside of them, like computerized stuff, and uh, it, it, they were like seven grand a piece, and I was terrified to work on them. And you know, the funniest thing is, when I started working on them, and all the research I did, they're just regular lights. Okay, they're they're the same. They're just priced up because Ferrari made them or whatever, you know. And they were, you know, once I got into them, uh, you know, they're standard polycarbonate. All the stuff came off. Um, you know, everything came off just perfect and the headlights came out perfect and the guy was very pleased with it. Uh, but with that being said, um, headlights can be really expensive. If you're scared or, or if you feel some kind of way and do not think they'll work out or you do not think you can do them, don't do it because the alternative is somebody like, uh, you messed my lights up. Uh, um, I need you to pay for that. Then what are you going to do? Do you have insurance? Are you at the business level yet where you have insurance? Um, you know, are you going to fight the guy? Is, you know, is he going to call the cops on you? Is he destroyed his headlights? And, you know, or what? Are you going to have to pay for these lights that you don't know how much they're worth? Okay? You'd be surprised. You know, even, you know, some old Mercedes headlights are worth like seven, $800 a piece. You know, $1,100 a piece. It was, it'll blow your mind once you start looking up the prices of headlights. And, um, you know, uh, so just, you know, never be afraid to tell somebody I can't do it. I've done it maybe twice. And that's just because somebody had sprayed a 2K clear. And like I said in, in the past, not all 2K clears are, uh, are equal. Okay. There is, there's only one 2K clear that I think is semi okay on headlights. It's not the thing to use because it's not meant for headlights. Okay, but if you had to use one, it's just a vehicle clear coat 2K clear. It is not designed for headlights. It should never even be on headlights. All 2K clear should not be on headlights. Okay, it should never do. But if you had to put one on there, it would be the vehicle clear coat 2K clear, which comes in a can or which you can buy um, in a tumbler and, and like spray it, put it in your spray gun and spray it. Uh, those are the only... Um, 2k clears and i wouldn't even say acceptable but if i had to choose one to put on a headlight it would be one of those um with that being said there are some death star 2k clears that shouldn't be on a vehicle period that are so hard and hardened so much and are so scratch resistant they're damn near bulletproof and i did a guy's light once who said that he had his friend spray the stuff on it a year ago and uh blah, 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 blah. and um you know sure enough uh you know when i had him call his friend his friend said it was 2k clear and uh and i was i talked to him and i said it's the one with the red cap and you have to crack the seal on the bottom he was like yeah i cracked the seal on the bottom and i've done it before i don't know what happened to the, his lights right they're all chopped up or whatever and uh, I told him, let me try to see if I can get this stuff off, right? Because it had been on there for a year, baked on, it was cracking and all this stuff. And I did a test spot with a 320 and then another test spot, you know, same test spot with the 220. 
and it just did nothing. And then I even did a 220 by hand. And usually I never go below 220. And, um, you know, just because the, the danger of destroying the light or burning the light or, or hitting, um, your tape or your vehicle's taped up, uh, there's more danger every grit you go down, the danger increases. So, um, with that being said, when I did the 220 by hand, which, uh, is usually like the most, um, you know, you know, it takes longer, but it will remove a lot of shit real good, um, and not burn out the pad. Um, it did nothing pretty much. It was just like, it just laughed at me. And I was like, I told the man I would have to spend like an hour and a half to two hours per light. So you're talking about paying me for about four hours of time. And I was like, I just don't think it's worth it. It's going to, you know, it's going to total your headlights. Okay. You, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to pay cheaper than to go buy brand new headlights, uh, than pay me for four or five hours, you know, and I'm just going to be honest with you, you know, cause he wanted to do it, but I was like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, just, just buy new headlights. You might pay a hundred or two dollars more, a hundred, a hundred or two hundred dollars more. But I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like it's, it's worth more for you to get new headlights than to pay you that much money to sit here working your headlights for, you know, four or five hours straight. All right. Um, you know, time is money and you know, I do charge by the hour in a sense, not necessarily. I don't say, Oh, you know, I don't look at the time and like, Oh, I worked 30 minutes. You pay me this. I don't, but you know, it's, it's, it's a uh, time isn't, is a, uh, issue. Uh, once again, another pro tip. There you go. Just like I said before, you know, put the tape on the battery so you know which ones are ready to go, which ones aren't. Uh, gotta get back to uh, this light here. Uh, see this high RPM. I have a lot of people that ask, can I just do it by hand, and can I, can I, you know, get the same results if I do it by hand? And you know, I, that's one of the biggest topics in the DMs. And I tell people, you cannot achieve this level without uh, power tools. You can't. Um, and if anybody tells you they can, um, they're just not educated enough and they just, they're just thinking with their heart, like, oh, my myth is the best of this myth. Like, no, no, no. You cannot achieve the same level as with tools, okay? No metaphors, no nothing like, uh, you know, if you want to travel cross country, is it better by foot or by car? or by a plane, okay, there's, those are tools, right, um, you know, there's no, um, there's just no way, okay, because there's certain factors here, this, uh, device I'm using right now, you hear that, that is 7,800 RPMs, okay, so how many times, or how long do you take, it would take you to get 7,800 RPMs by your hand, how many hours, how, how, how dead would you be? Right. <laughs> so, how, you know, how about the even the uh, the the power drill that I'm using on the uh, the first three steps? You know, that is about seventeen hundred RPMs per minute and six hundred pounds foot uh, torque. You cannot lift six hundred pounds with your hand. I guarantee you. OK, <laughs> you cannot do seventeen hundred RPMs per minute. Okay, you can never, it would take you probably a couple hours to reach 1700 RPM and the lactic acid in your arm would build up so much, you would, you would feel like dead. You'd probably rip and tear muscles before you got to that level. And this, these devices are doing that per minute. Okay, that's for one reason. That's for one thing. That's, that's, uh, such a high level of, uh, removal or buildup or polish that it's doing that you cannot emulate that by hand. Also, there is, uh, I haven't said in a long time, but there is a heat factor. You see how clear this is already before I spray it? There's a heat factor from friction, okay? Friction of the pad that is actually heating this light up to a certain point. Um, the, the microscopic, uh, spongy, poor surface to a certain percent, uh, that is changing the clarity of this light, believe it or not. Okay. We're not going to get into this video. That's another video, but that is a part of it. Okay. Which is heat and friction via heat or uh, heat via friction. Okay, you cannot produce that by hand. Um, this is one of the reasons why my clarity is unmatched, okay? Um, you know, if you ever noticed, it, it, pay attention to this light. You know, this is a good example how liquid, how 
um, fluid and liquid my uh, restorations look. And believe it or not, this, uh, this uh, what I just sprayed is probably about halfway done drying. This is what it's going to look like. You're going to take a look at I come out and do other cars for uh, customers. And I always take pictures and, and put it in my references and whatever and do experiments. Not experiments, but like visual mental experiments on the lights when I examine them. When I come back to do their friend's car, or their mother's car, or their other car, their wife's car, or whatever. And I already did their other car like maybe, what, six, seven, eight months ago, a year ago. And I look at it and it looks like this. Okay. Believe it or not. Um, beautiful. Look how clear and liquid it is. When the car pulls off the lot, the headlights don't even look this good. Believe it or not, they don't even look this good. Now look at the other one. This is how it started off. Uh, this is the one that's not as bad as the uh, one I just did. I always start, once again, with the bad one first. Because it's a, it's a, it's a mental morale booster. It boosts your confidence. It boosts your momentum when you knock out the hardest one first. Okay, um, I don't know if you know anything about martial arts or anything like that, but any uh, sound martial arts individual will tell you if you're in some kind of jam or whatever and there's more than one person coming at you, what do you do? You don't fight the small guy first. You don't knock the small guy out first. You attack the biggest motherfucker out there first because he's the biggest threat. But anyhow, back to headlights. Check this out. This is how I pulled up with this. When you see this guy coming with this shirt on, you already know you're about to get some of the best headlight restoration in the world. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Another rule. You got to have confidence about yourself. Work yourself up to get confidence. When you get so many headlights in a row that are so good, you're going to get that confidence. Subscribe and get that.